Hi everyone, I'm God's daughter and I've been asked to share a word of encouragement with you today. A little bit about myself, my real name is Noguzita Namjuli, I'm from South Africa, I am a child of God, I am in love with God and I do my very best to live sold out for Him. I have an online ministry called God's Daughter Ministries. It's not specific to anyone. It's for everyone. It's for the entire God family. And you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So today we're going to be talking about being set apart by God and being used by Him to advance the kingdom as young people. Um, so let's open 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12 to 15. 1 Timothy 4, 12 to 15. 12 to 15. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to preaching, and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters, give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. My main, main focus verse is verse 12 that says, Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but be an example to all believers. Don't let anyone look down on you just because you are young. Don't let anyone tell you that you cannot understand God things. You can't have a relationship with God because you are young. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't preach. You can't jump into ministry because you are young. But in the, at the same time, don't let the fact that you are young, don't let that stop you from pursuing God. Don't let that, don't use being young as an excuse to not seek God and to not pursue God. When it comes to Christianity and it comes to faith, it's a relational thing. It's about me having a relationship with God and letting him use me for the advancement of his kingdom letting him use me for what it is that he has set aside for me and before i can have a relationship with god i need to be saved i need to be saved being saved and having faith is not transferable it's not a transferable thing just because my parents are pastors just because my parents are in ministry just because my parents believe in god they have a relationship with god that does not automatically make me saved. I need to be saved personally on my own and I need to have my own personal relationship with God. When we look at Luke chapter 3 verse 7 to 9, it says that John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, produce fruit in keeping with repentance and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. Just because your parents are in ministry, just because your parents are pastors, just because your parents have been saved for the longest time does not automatically make you saved. It does not automatically mean that you are going to heaven. Just like calling yourself a, a, a child of Abraham does not automatically mean that you will receive Abraham's inheritance. You need to go out and reap what you sow, you need to go out and produce the fruit of the spirit that you, that, 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 yeah, you need to go and, and, and produce the fruit of the spirit. You need to have a relationship with God and you need to move in spirit and move in Christ. Christianity and faith is a relational thing. It's about me having a relationship with God and letting him use me for the advancement of his kingdom. And before he can use me, before he can use me, I need to seek out, I need to seek him out, I need to seek out his presence, I need to seek out his word, I need to pursue him, actively pursue him, and form this relationship with him, so that he knows me and I know him. God will not use you, he will not give you a great assignment, he will not give a great ministry and a great mission to someone that he does not know. He will not give someone who's not willing to spend time with him, who's not willing to put in the time to get to know him. He was not going to give that person a great mission to do in his name. There are benefits to spending time with God. And it's so very necessary. 
it's so important for you to spend time with God. And how you can spend time with Him is by reading His Word. You read His Word, you pray, you praise and you worship Him, and you find yourself in fellowship. Surround yourself with people who are godly minded. Surround yourself with people who are heading in the same direction that you are, who have the same mindset that you have. Make going to church a thing. Make going to church a priority. I know as young people, you know, we have homework, we have school, we have all of that. Some of us are working. We have all these responsibilities. But I'm telling you now, once you make God a priority, everything else will follow. Everything else will work out as it should. When you look at the 10%, the 10% that we meant to give to God every month, it's not just talking about money. It's not just talking about money. It's about every area of your life, every aspect of your life. You give it to God. You give it to him first. Every area and aspect of your life, you give it to him first before you go and pursue those things. You give it to him first. I give my life to him first. I give my school first. I give the 10% first to God, not to the other things that I need to do to him first. I make him my priority. And watch him, watch him move in your favor. Watch him move in your favor. Make going to church a priority. Understand that it is important to be in fellowship with other believers. There is so much power that comes with community. There's so much strength that you gain from fellowshipping with other, with other believers. You make that a priority. You make reading his word a priority. His word is what we need each and every day to strengthen us for the battles ahead, for the journeys ahead. His word is very important. It's very important. It's what we live on. It is what we live on. In Matthew chapter 4, you find Jesus in the desert. He was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And on the last day, the devil came and tempted him. And everything that he was saying was the word. He told him that the word says this, this, and this. So do this. And Jesus retaliated. He's like, no, that the word may say that, but this, this is what the word actually says. Because the enemy has this, 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 I don't want to say talent. He has this talent of taking the word and twisting it so that it sounds pleasure it sounds like the word but it's not actually the word he makes it sound worldly he makes it well yeah he makes it it's the word but it's more worldly so unless you know the word you will crumble you will fall you will be weak it's so very important to know the word make praying a thing make praying a priority it's very important to pray it's very important to pray because that's where we fight our battles. That's where we gain our strength with the word and with prayer. That's where we fight our battles and where we gain our strength. Make worship music a thing. Make praise and worship music a thing. You know, when you listen to praise and worship, it's like you are surrounded in this amazing atmosphere and you are surrounded by God. Make that a thing because even though you're just sitting, let's say you're sitting on the bus, you're sitting in a taxi in a car and you're just listening to your Christian music. It just, it, it, it makes you feel so much better, especially if you are going through so much. It just changes your perspective of what is happening. And it, it's like you are sitting there with God right next to you. Make going to church a thing. Make reading the word a thing. Make praying a thing and make worship a thing and make serving a thing serve god that's another way of creating a relationship with god and strengthening this relationship with god is by serving him as serving him i know the most there's like three ways that a lot of people think okay when when people talk about serving god they just think about ushering preaching and singing in the worship team. That's not the only way that you can serve God in church. Yeah, sure. Join the worship team if you feel led to join the worship team. Be part of the ushers if you feel like you're an usher. Send messages if you feel like that's, that's your thing. But there's also other things, other ways that you can serve God in church 
and other ways you can serve God outside of church. You can help with the parking, going outside and help them park cars. That's a way of serving God. Helping with the decoration and the setting up before church, that's serving God. Helping with um, snacks for after church, that's serving God. Helping out with children ministry, that's serving God. Praying for people, that's serving God. Funding the church, giving some money to the church, that's serving God. No one has to see you for you to... No one has to see you for it to be deemed as serving God. As long as your heart, what your intentions are pure, you are serving God in everything that you do. In everything that you do. Acts chapter 13, verse 42 to 43 says, chapter 13, 42 to 43. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. These people, they had their normal service, but after service, they went out and sought after Paul and Barnabas to tell them more about Jesus. And that's what you as a young person should be doing. Seek out these things. Seek out God. Seek to serve him. Seek to serve other people. Seek to read the Bible. Seek to pray. Make it a thing that like, think of it as your lifeline. A relationship with God is your lifeline. And as a young person, as a young person, go out, go the extra mile to help out in your church. Be the first one to volunteer when they ask for volunteers. Don't wait for someone to come to you and ask you to do something. As a youth in the church, the youth are meant to be the most active. They're, the most, they're supposed to be the most active people in the church. There's so much power in the youth. Do you know that? There's so much power that comes from the youth. God delights in the use of young people. Like, like 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. What it says. Do not let anyone tell you that you are too young but be an example for other believers don't let anyone tell you that you are too young to do these things don't look at your age and feel like i'm too young to do these things if you feel like i i want to lead offering one day go to your pastor and talk to him let him know let him know and he'll counsel you and he'll help you you are not too young to do anything God-related. You are not too young to do anything God-related. There is no time frame. There is no time limit. There is no specific age where you can start having a relationship with God. There's no specific age where you can start moving in Christ, moving in spirit, and doing what your parents do, doing what pastors do. I've seen, I've seen young people. I've seen 13-year-olds, I've seen 10-year-olds have more spirit and fire than a 40-year pastor. I've seen teenagers pray like they've been doing this for 50 years. And I've seen old people, I've seen older people, I've seen elders who are weaker than an 8-year-old child in spirit. You are never too young to step into Christ. You are never too young to move in spirit. You are never too young. You are never too young. God delights in the use of young people. Do you know that the youth is the future of the church? The youth is the future of the world. The future of the church is built upon the youth. And if you guys are not doing anything, if you guys are not moving in Christ, if you guys are not serving Christ, who's going to be left to serve when all the elders are gone? Be.
God delights in the use of young people. God has been calling young people since the beginning of time. Look at Joseph, David, Esther, Mary. All of them called to do great things. All of them called to save a people. All of them called to save a nation. Being a young person is not, I don't know, this power that comes with it. There's so much power that comes with it. And in being used by God, so you have your relationship with God. Now that you have your relationship with God, God can start to use you. He can start to use you. Because you are now rooted in his word. You are rooted in him. So now he can give you assignment. He can, he, can, he can give you your assignment. And in being used for his kingdom. In being used to advance his kingdom. God is going to use us differently. He's going to use us differently. God has made us all different. We all know that, right? We are not all the same. God has made us all different. We all have our different personalities, our different hair types, different passions, different interests, different gifts and talents. And God wants to use all those differences to change the world. He wants to use all those differences to change the church. He will use us differently. He will use us differently. Because your mother walked a certain path doesn't mean that you have to walk that same path. God has a different path for you. And it's okay. It's okay. You know, we tend to live, we live in this world. And we tend to give in to the ways that this world, to the systems of this world. All the world wants to do is make us the same person. The world wants to do is make us the same person. It just wants to produce copy after copy after copy of the same person. Because it tells you, if you want to be pretty, you have to look like this. If you want to be successful, you have to do this. You have to, you know, in order to be famous, you have to have this. You have to do this, you know. But that's not God. God celebrates our differences. He delights in our differences. We don't have to be like anyone else. I don't have to be like my mother. I don't have to be like my father. I don't have to be like my brother. I don't have to be like my sister. I just need to be me and the me that I am in Christ. When you serve, when you serve, don't serve to be like someone else. Serve to be you. Don't try to imitate other people. Don't try to imitate other people. In Acts I think it's chapter 22. We have these people. So they've been seeing um, Paul, Peter, and them. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> they've been watching Paul preaching and speaking in God's name and healing people in God's name. So they decided, okay, okay, all right, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. So they go out and they start preaching people in God's name. But they're not Christian. They're not Christian. They just saw Paul doing this. So they're like, I'm going to do it too. They went out and they were trying to, what's this? They were trying to deliver someone from demons. And the demons just looked at them and they're like, okay, I know Paul. I know God. But who are you? Who are you? Who are you? When you imitate other people, it means that you don't know who you are. You don't know. It means that you don't know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, it means you don't, you don't know the God that you serve. We have our own Christ. We have our own identity. God made us us for a reason. He didn't make you like your brother. He didn't make you like your mother for a reason. Because he knew, he knew that you... You, the world needs you. You don't have to be like someone else. You don't have to copy someone else. You don't have to look like someone else. You don't have to act like someone else. You just have to be you. The you that you are in Christ. The you that you are with Jesus by your side. 
if God wanted to use one person, one type of person, he would have. He would have. But that would be pointless. That would be pointless. Because when you look at it like this, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about the body of God. It talks about the body of Christ. About how we are like the body of Christ. We are like the body of Christ. If now I don't have an arm, I don't have a leg, I'm kind of, I'm, I don't want to say useless because that makes it sound like I'm, you know, but it's talking about Christ's body. As a church, we are all part of Christ's body. And if my arm isn't working and my leg isn't working, I'm not going to get much done. If my eyes decide that they are useless to me, I can't get much done because I can't see what I'm doing. If my mouth decides that it's useless, I can't speak God's word. I can't do what God says that I, I can't say what God says I need to say. And if my whole body was just made up of an arm, if my whole body was just an arm, that's pointless. What am I going to do with just an arm? And that's the same with us. God made us all different. Some of us are arms. Some of us are eyes. Some of us are ears. Some of us are legs. Some of us are feet. We are meant to work together using all those differences. If we are all the same person, we just this use this one arm that is detached from the body. It's useless. You can't do anything with it. We are made different for a reason. Okay, love your differences. You don't have to be like everyone else to be liked by them. You don't have to be like everyone else to be popular. You don't have to be like someone else so that someone else can see you. We're all different and we are different for a reason. God loves us as we are. And I pray that more and more people more and more young people get to understand that God loves us as we are. And I pray that we all come to a point where we accept ourselves as we are. And understand that I don't need to be anyone else. I don't need to be anyone else to be used by God. I don't need to copy someone else to feel the same spirit that they're feeling when they're doing that exact thing. You know, just because someone preaches in a certain manner doesn't mean that you have to preach in that way. There are so many different ways to preach. God made, made sure that we were all different. He made sure that we were all different because he knew. We don't all vibe to one thing. We don't all vibe to one thing. Just like we all have our preferences, right? There are so many genres, not genres, but there are so many different types of Christian music that different people vibe with and it's the same with being used by God and using the talents that he has given us different people vibe to different things that's why there's so many different people that's why God loves to use different people God made us different for a reason because he knows the world needs our different personalities. The world needs the different perspectives that come with that personality. The different perspectives that come with the type of people that we are. Delight in your differences. You know, God knew that the world needed someone exactly like you. That's why he made only one you. Don't let anyone tell you that you're boring, you are useless, you are worthless, just because you are the way that you are. God made you that way, and he only made you that way for a reason. There is something on your life, there is something on your life that is so important and that God needs for what he wants to do through you. For what he wants to do for the world. God thinks that you are beyond special and important. God thinks that you are special. 
He thinks that you are important. And what he says about you should be the only opinion that matters. God thought so highly of you that he only made one you. And he wants to use you the way that you are. Don't let anyone tell you. Don't let anyone put you down. Don't let anyone put you down because you are young. Don't let anyone put you down because of the way that you are. Don't let anyone put you down because of the way that you dress, the way that you speak, the way that you see the world. Don't let anyone put you down because of the music that you listen to. Don't let anyone put you down because of the lifestyle that you choose to live. But be an example for all believers. Show other people. Show other people. Show other people how good it is to walk in your Christ identity as you are. Show other people how good it is to serve God. Show other people how amazing it is to have a relationship with God. Don't let anyone put you down because you are young. God needs you, young person. God wants you, young person. God delights in the use of young people because we are active, we are vibrant. Let's learn to say yes to God things. Let's not think about, I'm not like her. God, don't use me, I'm not like her. Don't have the Moses mentality. Don't tell God you can't do this because you're young. Don't tell God you can't do this because you are this type of person. Don't tell God that. You just learn to say yes to God. Learn to say yes to God. Other people are watching you. They are watching you and God is trying to perform a great wonder through you. Yes, sure, you are introverted and you are shy. And God wants you to step up in front of people and sing like you've never sung before. God wants to show someone that it is possible to be the way that you are and be used by God. I just pray you guys get to understand how important it is to have a relationship with God and to know that you are never too young to have a relationship with God. You're never too young to be used by God. God wants to use you as a young person. You are the future of the church. You are the future of the world. God wants to use you to change the church. He wants to use you to change the world. Step into your Christ identity. Step into what God wants to use you for. Step into what God has in store for you. Use what he has given you. And be an example to all believers. Be an example to all believers. And right now, I just want to pray. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. If you are listening to this word... And it has touched you or you you listening to this word and you are telling yourself that I want to be used by God. I want to have a relationship with God. If you've never been saved, I want you guys to just wherever you are right now, I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. Close your eyes and lift up your hands. And just pray. Pray after me. Pray after me. Father, Father, I believe in you. I believe in you with all my heart. I want to be used by you, Lord. I want to have a relationship with you, Father. And I pray, God, that you help me 
to understand that there's greatness in my differences. Help me, God, to move in spirit. Help me to move in spirit, Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my life. I believe that he died for my life. And he died to set me free from my sins. So I come before you right now, Lord. And giving myself to you. I'm turning to you, God. I've decided to follow you. I've decided to live for you. I've decided to follow you, Jesus. So I pray right now, Lord, that you wash me clean with the blood of the Lord Jesus. I'm praying to you, Father, and asking you to come into my life. Move in my life. Do what you need to do in me, God, and use me. From today onwards, I'm doing things differently. No longer will I look back, but I look forward to what you have in store for me. I'm doing things differently, God. I'm being me, and I'm living for you. You are my Christ. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for the new life that you have given me through Jesus. Amen.